before we get started on today's video, get ready for some story time, boys. A long, long time ago, roughly 30 minutes ago, I played some basketball. But it wasn't normal basketball with your boys. It was something else entirely. It was an empty gym, so I'm like, let's play a little ball. When out of nowhere, four wild and tetacumpos arrived. Being the warrior that I am, I challenged them. I took three Utes in the gym, us four versus you four. Let's go. I was at war. We defied all odds. We fought through all the obstacles and lost 11 to 1. Moral of the story, after getting absolutely humiliated on the very sad drive home, I thought to myself, how can I inflict the same amount of humiliation on all of my opponents? I thought and thought and thought, but had no clue until it finally hit me. I can simply just play the most degenerate deck known to Yu-Gi-Oh! history by using the greatest mat known to mankind, my beautiful uh, Triv Gaming play mat, in the description below, could be used for many things. In fact, it's not even just uh, a play mat, actually, guys. If you're cold, you can simply even use it as a little uh, scarf, as a t-shirt, or even a sweater. You can even use it as a play mat. So get yours in the description below. The biggest degeneracy known to mankind, very simply, Kali Yuga Invoke Turbo. This is how to inflict the most humiliation to all of your opponents. Enjoy greatness. And don't forget to get your playmats in the description below. Also, don't forget to go to YGOMarket.com with Pangod 5, get 5% off all your Yu-Gi-Oh singles. I sp uh, with an E though, I spelt it wrong, this is like an E. Here it is boys, greatness in action. Now I'm gonna commentate uh, this is a replay of Invoked Orcus Kaliuga Turbo, whatever you want to call it, versus Salad Boys. Now, I'm going to show you guys why. And he's a decent player. Like, he didn't misplay at all. Maybe one of the games. But I'm going to show you guys right now. Uh, pure perfection at its finest. Now, we lost a die roll. And I want you guys to see something. Uh, look at our hand. We opened up <clears throat> multiple cards that we don't want to open. We opened up... Uh, this is a bad hand. We opened up Invocation. We opened up Orchestrated Return, which is horrible to draw because you get for, get it for free in the combo. You get Invocation for free in the combo. So you lose two cards here. You're literally playing with a three-card hand, all right? Uh, you don't want to see Nightmare in your hand, again, because you get it for free through the combo. So you're actually playing with three dead cards. <clears throat> you're playing with a two-card hand. Now, I'm going to show you guys just why this deck is absolutely incredible. Uh, let's get straight into it. So, as I said, he's playing Solid Boys. He does a little typical... Salaman, great play. He does open. Uh, he uh, doesn't hit out Foxy, but again, that doesn't matter. I want you guys to really see why this deck's so good. If we went first, even this hand that you see is putting up Kali Yuga, backed up with Deco Talker game one, because no one mains Denkos or Kaijus. That's a side deck thing, right? But they could main Twister. So you always uh, you main deck the deck the decode in our extra deck to ensure that game one we back up our Kali Yuga with a decode, and then we side we side into uh, Redoer and. Uh, Ibli to be able to stop Kaijus and to be able to stop Denkos in game two and game three, depending on what they play. And you can extremely easily put up two of those three, but the goal is to put up all three of Decode, Ibli, and Redoer to stop Denko, Twister, and Kaijus uh, to literally make your Kaliuga an auto win. Uh, I'm going to show you guys more so on the deck profile later, the card choices. But now here's how we're going to break your typical uh, Salaman Great board where he puts up two back row. We can assume he has a hand strap and we. we no, it's the counter trap in there. Uh, let's get it. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys right now with a very like below average hand here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys now why this deck's amazing. So the first play here, obviously, we play the Dogman because you want more level 7s because this is a Kali Yuga Turbo. Uh, we're going to OTK him. Obviously, we're going to want... I'm going to show you guys. We're going to OTK and set up a Kali Yuga just in case he somehow plays out of it. But I'm going to show you guys right now why this is so broken. So we're going to melt down uh, Alistair. We unfortunately draw the Invocation. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to normal the Alistair right off the top. We do play two invocation because you want to see the invocation. Uh, and Alistair is kind of like a bait per se if you're going second. Uh, if you start off the bat from, from Meltdown, your opponent simply thinks that you're playing Invoked. What plays do Invoked have other than Normal Summon? Pass. But playing Orcus in it now allows you to do more stuff other than Normal Summon Pass. So 
Look at this now. So you want to, we played more than one invocation to hoping to draw it, right? So we drew it. Obviously, you're going to impermanence Alistair. Anyone with the right mind is stopping Alistair from a resolving if you, all you see is this, right? Because what else is the deck going to do? Literally set two pass if you stop it. So he, he's feeling all nice that he thinks he stopped our plays. And this is where the genius comes in. We allure. What else is Invoke going to do on their very first turn other than draw hand traps or traps? Obviously, he's going to negate it. He's playing pure Invoked. This is the genius of playing secondary engines. Because you start with your secondary engines, like I said, you're playing Trick Stars. You're going to go through the same plays. Because what line of play do Trick Stars have other than normal impermanence pass? Nothing. Literally nothing. So obviously, you're going to negate everything you possibly can. Otherwise, you're going to lose the trap. And you're getting back to trap anyways. And then this is where we absolutely cuck him. Because out of nowhere, then he sees Orchestrator return where we draw two cards. And Ash doesn't come through, we're like, we're blessed. We start going out, we set the invocation, we know we're going to summon our boy Purgatrio later with it. And, uh, boom. Now the danger's coming. Now he's thinking, what's this guy playing? Orcas, danger, invoked. What's this guy playing? Pen God, this guy definitely is the Pen God. Uh, we summon Nessie, we draw a card. Dogman resolves, making Purgatrio a one-card OTK now. We can simply activate Invocation and win with all his cards, losing a 1,000 attack. Getting rid of his Bailings by the Purgatrio, by the way, uh, which is amazing. And if you're not playing Solid Boys, you simply go into Nightmare Phoenix anyways for your combo. We pop a card. Uh, we didn't need to do it. We just we could have literally... That didn't matter. We're just literally flexing at this point. Uh, we'll just keep playing here. We'll just keep going. And you're doing random stuff. Because honestly, this is... Uh, we win. We, uh, we literally win just by activating Invocation. But at this point, we don't care. We just want to keep playing. It's kind of just for the fun of it. Uh, just flexing on him. The more we play, just flexing some more. Uh, and then we go summon Orca's Nightmare. Not that it matters. Whether he Ash or not, it really doesn't matter at this point. We Our graveyard stacked with Orca's cards regardless. So no matter what he hand traps here, it doesn't matter. If he hand trapped the Mermaid, it didn't matter. Our grave was full of Orca's cards. If he sucked anything, it didn't matter. Uh, it's As you see, this deck, it just like really pushed through all their interruptions. Because he's thinking we're playing Invoked. Obviously, you're, you're stopping a lore if you're playing Invoked. Because what else are you going to counter trap, right? You're getting back to counter trap next turn for free anyways. So, just like that, you got Purgatrio. Which, Purgatrio alone is game. But just to flex on him some more. Just show you guys how easy it is to actually OTK. That's why since we got rid of the Bay Lynx. Is they're just going to simply put everything in. Like, look at this. It's amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. We literally just put the whole thing on on thing. Uh, we even drew all our bricks and we still did it. Uh, got a few uh, Boral Sword in there just for the jokes, for the lulls. Summon some more monsters for the lulls, and there we go. That is literally like 15 plus K damage. Uh, Purgatory alone is doing 8,000. If it wasn't for Dogman, you'd be doing 6,100. So all you need to do after you clear that is 1,900, which uh, Boros Sword 6,000 will do the trick. And that is game one for uh, maybe one of the best decks in the game. Uh, anything with Danger Orcas PK is the best deck, but uh, just this is a whole other level with Invoke. Invoked and Dino is probably the best way to go when you go with Danger Orcas PK. But I do think you need a secondary uh, engine in Danger Orcas PK because uh, by itself, like one Dweller stops it. Just with one Dweller. You want to have some sort of backup just in case. At least if they Dweller, because uh, Solid Boys could easily, could easily Dweller you, right? So then here we go. Uh, we're going to look at it. He, did not, he opened Subpar in his hand, but uh, it doesn't matter whether you open Subpar or whether you open uh, Amazing. We're just simply going to destroy him anyways. So... We melt on hoping he ashes, but he doesn't. Now he knows what we're playing. Now he, our, our little Alistair's might not work. Uh, our little Bates might not work, but it's all good. So we simply just go through our deck. Uh, he bailers Alistair, as he should. Uh, the chance of drawing a 2 of 40 is not very high, but... And unfortunately, we cut our deck to 40. I didn't want to play 60, but you do want to see Alistair as much as possible. We're playing... like We're maxing out on the Alistair engine. We're playing 8. Like, and, but instead of playing shitty hand traps and traps to do nothing in Invoke... You actually play good cards in it. So you simply take get rid of all the shit staples like hand traps and traps and actually do good stuff. Uh, so we just simply throw in a bunch of dangers. All the level 7 dangers, Mothman's, 18 dangers right now with the Orcas engine. And it just flows so smoothly. It's incredible. I feel like you know, dangers and Orcas were made for uh, Invoke deck. And now I understand that the only dark is Kaliga or whatever that one is. But uh, the level 4, uh, it's jokes. Kaliga kind of sounds like Kaliuga. It's like... Konami kind of telling you they were meant for each other. Anyways, uh, you simply make the Purgatrio. And the extra deck is two Purgatrios. In this one, uh, I'm playing one right now. But I'll show you in the updated deck list. We're playing two. Uh, just to ensure OTK. Uh, it, it's so easy to OTK. It just, right before you go into the Orcas engine. You just use Invocation on one of the on the arrow that Mermaid points to. And then you go into the Orcas engine. So, uh, it, the Orcas effects where you can't summon anything but Dark. Doesn't affect the deck whatsoever. Because you simply make... The, uh, you you draw into Alistair before that. You have eight ways to do it in a 40-card deck with infinite draw power. 
So you go, Alistair, you make your perga trio before Under Mermaid. So to ensure that you don't get locked out of uh, only darks, right? And now you keep going here to show you guys how we're going to play through everything. Uh, he showed me he showed me his play spot. I don't even know why he did it. Uh, I don't think I was supposed to know where it was. Unless he said it with Falco or something. Anyways, uh, we go Mothman. We draw a card there. We go Allure. Uh, draw two. And we got Nightmare Phoenix. We get rid of the other one. Called by the Grave. He's scared the... <laughs> He, for some reason, he called the uh, invoker because he was scared, man. This guy, I, I, uh, oh man, what I did to him last game was rape in some countries. Uh, absolutely destroyed the guy. So, uh, he was uh, scared of a Purgatrio uh, obliterating him. So, uh, hey, we're gonna keep going out there. He shows some respect to our deck, OP that deck. Uh, yeah, it is. Like, it just keeps going. Like, he just used some um, interruptions, uh, Valor and Call by the Grave, two interruptions. And uh, he can't, like, we have four cards in hand with the whole mermaid combo there. So we just keep going here, simply showing cards, drawing. Uh, unfortunately here, I did, I shouldn't have made him Mothman. I shouldn't have Mothman because he could have drawn into a hand trap, uh, which is all good. Mermaid, and he did. He drew into an ash. So he stops our mermaid, which is no problem whatsoever. Uh, we're simply going to keep going and show you guys why it's so easy to OTK. Uh, we keep going here. So we're going to Nessie. And we just want to put as many monsters on board as possible. If you discard the Nessie, it doesn't matter. Just summon the trap. Didn't matter which one. We ended up drawing the uh, uh, rank up, which does suck because the, we were going to go into Rusty anyways to get the rank up. So we kind of just lost the card there. But then at this point, we realized we're going to OTK him anyways. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, he makes Wolf uninfected. I don't know why. At this point, I realized he was a noob. But it didn't matter. Even if you played it perfectly, there was nothing you could have done to stop this. And again, this isn't me showing you guys how to destroy uh, Pro. It's more so showing you guys the power of my deck. Regardless of what he did, he couldn't stop it. And if you guys want, let me know in the description. I will make more videos of my Invoke deck obliterating these guys. And uh, just to flex on it, we OTK in here because Deco's at 4,100. With uh, Orcus Nightmare setting a level 8. Uh, boosting his attack by 800. Simply uh, OTKing him now. Uh, just to flex some more. He tries to Gazelle after I attack, which he can't do. But I'm like, sure, do it anyways. And just to flex, uh, after I, I, I clear his entire board, I was going to redo her decode and Kaliuga after OTKing him, uh, let alone uh, just clearing the board and not OTKing him. And just to show you guys again, that deck's amazing. If, mermaid, if uh, the Mermaid resolved, he would also have an Ibli after I OTK. But obviously, I wouldn't because I'm going second. But I'm going to show you guys how easy it actually is. So going second, after going through all his interruptions, the Valor, the Call by the Grave. He only had two interruptions, Valor, Call by the Grave. I know it was a bad hand, but through two interruptions... We literally OTK'd his ass, and we're going to put up Decode and Ash. So three interruptions. Ash, Valor, uh, and Call by the Grave. And we're literally toying with him, where we could have done even more than this. We didn't even go through our whole Orcas engine. We literally have Skeleton in the Grave. Like, we didn't even go through our whole Orcas engine. And by flexing on him, we put up Redoer, Decode, and Kaliuga. And this would have been the trap if we are going first. Uh, so we could have got rid of a Denko with the trap under. We would have had Decode to stop a Twister. And uh, if the Mermaid resolved, we'd have a Ibli for him to stop a... Also, uh, Kaiju. So, as I said, this deck is actually nuts. I'm going to quickly show you guys the deck profile. All right. So, this is... All right. This is the deck profile. Swiftly going to go through it for you guys. We put 18 dangers. Went to max out on everything. Give us level 7s. 3 danger Nessie. 3 Dogman. 3 Jackalope. Those all give you level 7s if done correctly. Mothman's to ensure that you could hit uh, the Jackalope. So, the Trooper Cobras to get a level 7 if you need it. Also, it's really good to go through your deck with the Mothman's. At Tsukinoko, because why would you not play free summon and draw? Uh, minimal Orcas engine, 2 one, one, one. That's it. With the orchestrated return as well. One boots, one launch, uh, sorry, one rank up magic launch. We do play that, we do side the trap. <clears throat> because when you, after side, no one mains Denkos. No one, uh, so you don't got to be scared of redo or getting rid of a Denko. Uh, after siding, Denko is a thing, it's in everyone's side deck. So you do want to make sure after siding, you can put up an Ibli to stop Kaijus. And a redoer to stop Denko. And you main deck the one thing that people do main deck out uh, for uh, as uh, Azathoth or Kaliuga or whatever. And that's Deco to stop Twister. So that's the only thing you need to main deck. And then after siding, if you're going first, you simply uh, main the Ibli and the redoer and the trap. And you have so you don't need uh, you don't need to summon out the Orcus engine to do the whole combo. Uh, it's extremely easy to do it anyways, even without uh, a Mermaid bringing out a nightmare. You don't need to. Mermaid's actually there after siding to bring out Ibli, just so they don't uh, cock you with uh, Kaiju. Because you have literally 9 ways into a level 7, and you have 8 ways into another level 7. And you're always going to go through 1 Alistair, and you're always going to go through a bunch of dangers. And actually, Hand Traps can't stop it. 
And if they do, let's say they really the uh, Alistair, then you simply get the Orcus engine, the mermaid to bring on level seven. It's that simple. So it's actually unbeatable. I'll show you guys more. So if you guys let me know in the combo in the description, if you want to see a uh, uh, complete combo tutorial on it in the description, because there's some really cool plays to put up decode to stop twisters, really cool ways to put up redoer to stop Denko with a trap under, and also to stop. Uh, uh, and Ibli, like I said, to stop Kaijus and still get the Kali Yuga and set up uh, Alistair in your hand to um, Perga Trio them next turn, which is why we play two and side these. Uh, also, we, so we play one boots and one rank up in the main. Obviously, like I said, just put the trap in there after going first. Eight, you max out on the Alistair engine. It's so good to put up a level seven and to OTK. Perga Trio is so good this format because you get rid of Bailings and OTK. It does 6,100 damage on the board. Plus, you back it up with a Bullsword and a bunch of random monsters. Uh, so eight, you max out on Alistair Engine, eight of them. Two Invocation is literally just playing a good version of Invoked. Uh, the normal version of Invoked is what? Like eight Alistairs, two Invocation, and then 30 shit cards. But what happens when you put just the Alistair Engine, like the max out of it, and then good cards beside it? It does magical things. Uh, one Upstar, three Allure Darkness. Just go through your entire deck like crazy. I am thinking about taking out one Invocation, but I love hard drawing the Invocation just because it seems bad normally, but... Uh, everyone's playing hand traps, and if you start off the bat with with in, with Alistair's, obviously they're gonna attempt to negate the Alistair. So that's why hard drawing an invocation is actually pretty nice. Uh, it seems weird, but it's actually is pretty nice to have. Uh, one orc share return and one rank up launch. If I were to take anything out, it might be the second invocation, but I do enjoy hard drawing it. You have so many ways to go into Alistair, and hard drawing it uh, just allows you to get a free uh, neg uh, free interruption off the board because they are gonna hand trap the Alistair if you start with it. Uh, the side deck, triple reboot, triple Denko. Uh, I want to take out Denko because we're done with the Alistairs, but it's such an auto winning in so many decks, so we just kept it in. Uh, just take out as many of the Alistair engines as you can, like maybe all, all the terraforming or something. Uh, two Wrestler, four Kaijus, and then this little engine here. If I were to change it, you know, I'm going to take out, uh, actually going to take out the Denkos. Uh, after testing, I did, uh, draw it too much with the, in, in conjunction with the Alistairs, but I actually just wanted to summon Alistair anyways. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to put in two Twisters. So you have seven cards to clear back row very well. And you're going to put another Kaiju. I do think Kaijus are very, very good in this format. Uh, so we got five Kaijus, seven. So seven to start, seven here to side against back row decks going second and seven against monster decks going second. I love doing that just so it's very easy to side. And then the three going first to ensure that you uh, cuck them no matter what they got. Extra deck, uh, three Nightmares. You obviously need all four Nightmares actually. Got to Sorcerers. Boral Sword, extremely tight extra deck. One underclock, one rusty. You need underclock for the absolute combo. And hey, what's uh every single Orcas deck I've showed so far had some some taste of old pendulums. You have to throw an odd eyes card in there, right? You have to throw a metal full fusion in there for my last danger dino deck. And you have to throw in a dark one for the Shadal deck. Like I swear every version of Danger Orcas has some form of pendulum love in there somewhere. Uh you just I can't I'm the pen god. I just can't not do it. That actually also inspired me to do this. Have a little of a Pendulum engine in there just for jokes. Uh, then you got Eyes Raging, so you got two of the big boys out there Kali Yuga and then double Purgatrio. If I were to take anything in extra deck, it would be to take out uh, the second Purgatrio, but it's too nice when you go first to have an extra Purgatrio to help with the OTK because sometimes it's uh, typically it's very easy to OTK after, but just in case they have like if you're playing dangers and have a bunch of monsters on board, you want another Kali Yuga, just like a uh, sorry, another Purgatrio, uh, easy win. And you also have access to the whole Orcas engine after you're going second to OTK. So after you put up, even if you waste all your cards in hand, you have, after you call you good, they're going to set a few cards, clear all their back, or they're going to set, let's say, a few dangers or something, or summon a few dangers. They can't do anything, and then you go Orcas combo, and then Burger Trio and OTK them into Oblivion. So that's the deck. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like it. Don't forget to support your boy and get this beautiful Triff Gaming playmat in the description below. Uh... And don't forget to subscribe. Check out my sponsor in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next video. Peace.